Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. We can't live if we don't breathe. And our quality of life improves exponentially if we learn how to breathe. Ironically, most of us don't get taught how to breathe properly, how to breathe through our stomach, how to use it to calm our nervous system. Todd Steinberg is the president of Camuso, a necklace concept that slows people's exhale to eight plus seconds, calming the entire nervous system. The fashionable artifact was inspired by 17th century Japanese monks and engineered to quiet the busy mind, which helps relieve anxiety in a natural way. Along with his fashion designer wife, Vanessa, Todd created the first meditation accessory. Todd wants Camuso Design to lead the fashion wellness movement and change lives in the process. Todd shared his story, he shared breathing techniques, and he gave a lot of really practical information. I'm sure you'll enjoy the episode. If you'd like to check out Todd's company, Camuso Design, you can go to www.camusodesign.com. The link's in the bio, and you can use the code NICK20 to get 20% off of anything in the store. Again, I've got that code in the bio. Make sure to check it out. Thanks again for supporting Move Your Mind. If you'd like to learn more, you can join our community at moveyourmind.me or you can buy the Move Your Mind book by going to nickbrax.com slash book. Todd, great to meet you. And yeah, thank you for coming on my podcast. Great to be here. Anytime I can share my story and, and share my experiences with the world, I'm always grateful. Yeah, well, we were saying just before we started recording, I guess, like how great it is to be able to just you know have these conversations it doesn't really feel like work and to be able to you know connect with people like yourself and just learn you know learn interesting facts and information it's yeah it's such a great tool and technology has made the world a you know much smaller and more accessible place to be able to do that well i think these conversations are like when you meet someone whether it's at a party or a bus stop or the grocery store and it's like you get to that meat of the conversation where you're through the small talk, you're through talking about the weather, and you're really talking about like these engagement, these soul engaging conversations where it's like, wow, I don't know how we got on this level, but I really like it. I'm really enjoying it. I've never had a conversation quite like this. That's why I love these, you know, these intimate conversations because we're actually talking about something significant and it's not just uh, passing time. So happy to be here. Totally. No, it's so true. And that's why I even got into acting because it's all cutting through the core of small talk and just trying to, trying to get connect with people. And I mean, I've always been like that where I found it very difficult in conversation to have small talk. I find it really boring and I just want to talk about the actual deeper parts, but a lot of people, you know, don't like that. Are you, are you that kind of person where, um, you know, you're wanting those deeper conversations or can you, can you do both? Yeah, I could do both. Uh, I'm like you. I, I've, tr- I've tried to act as well, and and I, I, a lot of time, excuse me, a lot of time I find myself acting like I'm like it's yeah. a conversation when it's really just like I really don't want to talk about you know the weather or you know like your hair. Like like let's get into it, right? And that's where there's this moment where when you do connect with someone like that, and I ask strange questions, like I I kind of get to the heart of it right away to find out if there's you know if there's any chemistry there or any sort of. Uh, you know, light on that, that we can connect with. And oftentimes they'll find one of two things happen. Either one, it's an amazing connection or two, there's kind of a pause <laughs> and they look at me like, like, why are you asking? Or it's a kind of an awkward situation. So uh, I think it's worth it because it's, you know, the relationships I've built with people that are, that have that other gear, it becomes an amazing connection. And some of those relationships go on for years and years, which is worth it. Yeah, I think it's a really good point what you're saying, because I think we're, and again, why, you know, these conversations, what we're talking about, vulnerability, being able to express yourself, especially for men, you know, stuff we haven't been taught. So important because a lot of the time we're scared to express, we're trying to people please, we're trying to say the right thing, we're trying to sort of um, just be able to just have these generic conversations with people. But if you can have that ability to just actually be yourself, talk about what you're interested in, maybe some, like you're saying, some people might not click with it, but that's actually still a positive because it means you're filtering through and then finding, you know, the people that are meant to be part of your, you know, tribe and that you connect with. So that's, that's a very healthy thing and something we should all in our own way be, you know, exploring. Well, it's interesting you say that because that's, that was, I I was the kind of guy who from the outside, Everything was cool, calm, and collective. Uh, everybody always said, you know, Todd is a, you know, what, a, what an easy guy to get along with, you know, um, you know, such a cool, calm demeanor. 
And what was actually happening was from very early on in my life was I unknowingly up until a few years ago, didn't know that I, uh, I have high functioning anxiety. And oh. if you don't know what that is, please give it a Google because it, uh, I, I checked almost every box of, you know, it trying, uh, it's hard to sleep at night because you're, you're having so much inner dialogue to <clears throat> there's questions. Your, your internal dialogue is asking you, it's making you uncomfortable. Um, and I thought that, Hey, like, I have a high processor. I and my gears are always turning fast, which again, I thought was a strength and some of it is, but when you don't know how to slow those wheels down, when you don't know how to put your phone down and be with yourself for five minutes and whether it just be like sitting down and it's, and there's a stillness or, uh, or you don't have any media around you or any people around you, that's where you can better assess your relationship with yourself. And for me, it caused a lot of discomfort. You know, there were thoughts that are coming up. I didn't want to deal with, um, there were areas of my life that I kind of put on mute, put on read, you know, like didn't feel comfortable having that conversation with myself. And that caused stress to manifest in other areas of my body. And that's where, you know, my entry into wellness was like, I, I don't want to just let this go. And I don't want to deal with it with vices like drinking or uh, self-medication or, even something as innocent sounding as scrolling on your phone, you know, just scrolling yeah. through Instagram, right? That like zombie like state. That's not what we're meant to do. It's not what we're, it's not, not helping us process our own thoughts, helping us achieve that sense of peace of mind, which I realized was more important than happiness. Peace of mind gives birth to that stuff, but you got to get there first. So mm -hmm. like I learned how to put the vice down and pick up kind of like my own voice in my in my head to have a better relationship with myself like that's where that's where that journey started so um so it is always always that comes back to self-awareness but uh but that was key that's so important and and you know like you're saying we can and i, I think i share a very very similar you know naturally my brain is going a million miles an hour and had have had anxiety my whole life and it wasn't until i really took action to address it that things changed and like you're saying, it helped with a lot of things, but it also held me back in a lot of areas because I felt like I was sort of achieving things all the time because your mind is wanting to jump from task to task. What I realized when I had sort of found more middle ground with it was that half the time I was working against myself to get things done. So you feel like you're being productive, but then you might not be as focused. You might not have that clarity or that ability to step back and think more creatively or whatever it is. So it's a fine balance. Like there's a lot of positives in having that, but for me personally, anyway, um, it caused me a huge amount of difficulty. And it was like, you know, everything that I achieved was 10 times harder than it needed to be because you're, you're not battling, you know, the main battles, your own mind to do anything. It's not the external factors. It's your head. So it's just it's such an important thing to address and self-awareness is, you know, the key, what you're saying. Well, you know, and for me, it was, it was deeper than that because there's consequences. It's not just, well, you're a little bit tense or you have stress. Like for me, I grew up, uh, my father died when I was 10 from basically heart disease. He had three oh, heart wow. attacks and then finally <clears throat> he had a bypass surgery and didn't make it. And I remember him always being worried. It was just worried mm, about money, worried mm. about job, worried about this, worried about that. And it was wow. essentially stress that, that took him out. And so, you know, I started seeing myself go down that path where, you know, and, and he and I were a lot of like, obviously it's my biological father. They're going to have those, mm. those, you know, similar things in common. And I, I have kids and I started to see myself go down that same path of like, okay, now I have kids. I know I have to, you know, be perfect in everything. And I, you know, in my business and in, in my marriage and, and, you know, being a father and, and finances and all these things. And it's like, whoa, you're, you're going down the same path. You know, like you're, you're going to have a heart attack soon. And the, the, my blood pressure and cholesterol, all these things were starting to spike. <clears throat> and there is a reason there, obviously the family history, but, um, people talk a lot about physical exercise and diet. And those things are, are absolutely important, but people kind of miss something there in that. Mm. Yes. Well, those are, you know, huge tenets of wellness. Um, we talk about mental wellness, right? It's like, what are we doing for ourselves in that department? And that's what led to our major discovery, which was, uh, we have a breathing problem. And, uh, I didn't realize mm. it at the time because we never talk about breathing. Nobody ever learns how to breathe the right way or the wrong way. It's just, 
happens automatically. And for me, it was sitting with a friend of mine uh, who's a psychotherapist, and uh, we we just we we're just talking, and he noticed that I was tight. Uh, he's like, I can just tell that you're <laughs> you're, not, you're not quite there with me right now. Like I can tell your mind's kind of drifting off. So uh, can I introduce something? You know, it's meditation. <clears throat> and I said, Yeah, look, I tried it. Uh, it's not for me. I, mm. I every time I try to do it, it's like I try to sit. You know, legs crossed, and my back hurts, and um, I get distracted, and it's just one of those things. I believe in it. I'm sure it works for a lot of people, but it's just not for me. But he's like, no, no, no. It absolutely is for you. And you don't have to be <laughs> some monk on a mountaintop to do it, right? So he actually handed me a straw. And he said, I want you just to breathe through this straw for two minutes and, you know, report back. Let me know how you feel. And as I breathe through this straw, I thought it was ridiculous at first, right? <laughs> like, are, are you serious right now? Like, you really want to breathe through straw? And it's like, okay. <laughs> so within 30 seconds, I was feeling like I could feel my heart rate come down. My shoulders dropped. Um, I could feel myself kind of in a floating like state and much, much calmer. And at this, mm. and I was fascinated. I was like, I don't, I don't know why this just happened. Like why physiologically did I just mm. react like this? And everything changed for me. It was like, Whoa, I realized there that our, the way we breathe is connected to the way we feel. And mm. our minds are actually a brain, especially neurologically connected to our diaphragm, you know, the pace of breath. <clears throat> through our vagus nerve, right? Through the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system are, are all connected. So the way I talk about it is this, we have 50,000 thoughts per day. Like just think about that number, right? it's a huge number. And there was a study- It's hard, done hard to get your head around that we can have that many, one person, it's crazy. Yeah, we're just pinballing you know, all day, thought, 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 yeah. thought, thought. And 80% of those are study found that are negative. Now wow. you take that number, park that number, right? Then you have how many times you breathe a day? There's 20,000 breaths, right? So it's like, okay, that's a lot of breathing and that's a lot of thinking. Mm. It's hard to control those thoughts, right? They just keep coming. It's like a flood. They just keep pouring down. But what you can control is your breath. So what we learned is that your breathing rate, you know, which is normally about 16 to 18 breaths per minute, kind of needs to come down. We need to be more in like the 12 to 10 range <clears throat> so mm. that, we have more of a coherent breathing signal, which signals your brain like, hey, everything's fine. Because you think about, mm, mm. you know, you're in a dark alley at night, you hear a noise, it's like, okay, either you stop breathing or you breathe really shallow and that enables your brain yeah. to produce adrenaline and cortisol, your muscles tend mm. to be your brain, fight or flight. So what I realized about myself was that there's the high functioning anxiety was that I was kind of in fight or flight on and off all day. and that's not mm. a place you want to live. Like that's not a place where you can be creative it's, or it's <laughs> have horrible. a good yeah. conversation or go to sleep at night or just feel mm. calm. Right. Mm. So that's when, <laughs> that's the moment that everything changed for me. When, when I realized that I had a breathing problem and it was tied to that, tell how I was feeling. That's I, I, yeah. It's, well, yeah. Super interesting. And I mean, it's kind of like scary when you tell that story of like that, you know, he, had that heart attack died because of the stress. I mean, because I think we, and I know I've done this where, you know, it's something I've wanted to change when I had it, but never thinking of it as it's actually potentially also my physical health is at risk long-term from this, you know, you sort of often don't think of that. So I think it is a really motivating factor. And, and the way you're wording that, I think it's, um, it's a really simple and effective way. I think for me, I've like heard so many people talk about breathing and there's so many different breathing techniques, but that just simple understanding of if we can lower the amount of breath we're taking and get deeper, you know, breath in, that's going to help us to then calm our nervous system down. You know, it just sounds very applicable and practical because I know myself, I already do so many different things. And, you know, I'm big on the breathing because I never used to know how to breathe properly. And when I first did acting class, they <laughs> taught me how to breathe through my belly and, you know, it changed a lot, but then I've, you know, I go to the gym, I meditate, I do different things. And then I've tried, had different people teach me breathing techniques, but it's hard to stick to it when you don't know, you know, what's, what's applicable. What do I do? So I guess that's the thing I'm interested in from you. You know, what would, even for me, you know, like what's something I, if I want to incorporate this daily, what, what's a simple way to start making that part of my daily, you know, a daily habit or just part yes. of what I do. It's funny. Cause like I, you know, uh, you ask somebody, what do you do for your teeth? And it's like, oh, well, I 
brush my teeth twice a day or I brush my teeth twice a day and I floss, you take care of your teeth, right? Um, mm -hmm. What do you do for your skin? Oh, well, I, I have my morning skin routine and my night skin routine. I make sure that I have my all my creams and moisturizers or whatever it is. My, 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 I want wrinkles, right? But mm -hmm. if I ask you what you do for, I'm really asking myself, right? What do I do for my mental health every day, twice a day or three times a day? What is that? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. I, it's technology or, you know, like, so, so I'll work out and sometimes I'll journal. Sometimes I'll go for a walk. You know, keyword there sometimes, but yeah. where is that daily commitment? So, so what I'm asking you is like, do you care more about your teeth and your skin than you do about your mental health? Mm -hmm. I think because taking care of your teeth or you know your muscles or whatever it is, you can see that change. You can exactly see that before and after picture. Yeah. Like, oh well, like you know, I've, I've lost six pounds, or you know, my teeth are now whiter as compared to this other picture. But what you can't take a picture of is your mental health, right? There is no mood tracker. There is no uh, no before mm -hmm. and after picture there. So what I've done is I've developed a breathing habit that is committed to doing something proactively and reactively. I'll explain that. But the proactive is when I wake up in the morning, it's immediate. I launch myself into two minutes of deep breathing. Mm -hmm. And that is what where I used to just launch right into 47 notifications on my phone in the morning. And it was like, eyes open, stress. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. it's not. It's not productive. That's not how we were meant to come into our, our morning, into our day, kind of like easing in. So when you start your day with two minutes of, you know, I call it coherent breathing, just five in, five out, you're setting mm. the tone for your day. And that's what I was going to ask you, actually. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. So like, that's all you're doing five in, so hold five in holding it and then five out. Yeah. Highly so hold. Recommend. Yeah. So, so there's, there's a breathing pattern called coherent breathing. If you, if you're, uh, if you're a reader, Go by James Nestor's breath. Change my life. Okay. Yeah, this yep. guy did all this research with, with Stanford and all these different scientists, and there is science behind the five in, five out, which ends up coming out to six breaths per minute. That is the ideal breathing rate. That's probably how you breathe when you're sleeping. You know, everyone's different. But when you get to that six breaths per minute, that's the ideal pattern, right? And just to take a quick example, like in mm -hmm. the animal mm -hmm. kingdom, you have a, the tortoise takes three to four breaths per minute can live up to 200 years okay now you contrast wow. that with a mouse that takes 100 breaths per minute and lives up to two years so mm, obviously there's mm. other factors at play there but the key is if you slow your breath you're going to feel better you're going to lower your blood pressure you're going to live longer because you know like going back going back to my dad heart disease is still the number one killer right so mm. what do we know about heart diseases are inflammation so what do we know about breathing is that it lowers the inflammation. So mm -hmm. within all that, start your day with that, with that breathing less, right? And just breathing in that, in that ideal pattern of, of five in, five out, it's going to unite the two hemispheres of your brain so that your prefrontal cortex is where you, wake, you make all those, you know, important decisions. That's where you need it to be clear. And when you're breathing shallow or you're breathing kind of in a broken pattern or you hold your breath, that gets clouded with cortisol. And cortisol is a good thing in some cases. Yeah. It's a stress hormone. It's just you needed some time to do certain activities. But man, when you're just trying to wake up in the morning <laughs> and get into your day, that's the pattern you want to go in. You always want to breathe in through your nose. So I do that. That's my mm. preventative breath, right? That gets me ready because like, there's no surprise you're, with 50,000 thoughts. Again, you're going to experience anxiety. You're going to experience mm -hmm. stress. There's like, don't be caught off guard by it. It's coming. That bus you can't, is you can't right. stop that. Yeah. Like you're saying, you can't like, and no matter how you even, you know, maybe if you're a monk or something, maybe not even then, but like, you can't, if you try and fight the negative thoughts, you're actually going to create a worse, you're going to be more stressed. So you've got to, it's accepting it, I guess. And, and then finding these techniques like you're talking about. Yeah. It's like, you ever build a sandcastle as a kid right by the shore and then you're like, so happy that you've built this huge moat and the, and the walls and the wave comes and it just knocks it all down. Oh uh, yeah. And you're devastated. Yeah. It's like, no, it's going to happen. The waves, the shore is going to mm. come. So these waves of thoughts are going to come in or an event that's going to come in. Don't be caught off guard. You know, like mm. I don't know if any of you play sports, but you want to, you know, get your feet wider apart so that you're ready to take that hit. And when you're ready to do that, you're not going to fall over. Whereas if you weren't anticipating mm. it. So, when you breathe slower, your brain is actually, your body's prepared for stress because you're in a calm state. So it's like, you know, on an airplane, when the masks come down, it's like always 
take yours first and then help your kid. Mm, mm. That's for a reason because you need to be in a, in a, in a, you know, obviously in a calm state of mind to take care of somebody else. So that's the preventative breath. And then rescue breath is when anxiety comes or when an event comes, mm. you can, you can use a breath that is going to basically reverse that from fight or flight to rest and digest. And the one simple rule there is longer exhale. The longer exhale triggers the parasympathetic through the vagus nerve and it tells your brain, hey, whatever was going on, false alarm, let's get back to calm. And not even, I'm not saying when I say calm, I don't mean like sleepy, uh, you know, close your eyes. I'm just saying like calm assertive, right? Like you're just ready and mm-hmm, not, mm-hmm. your heart rate isn't up. So yep. that's where in for four, out for eight comes in. You can do uh, that that's what I was gonna, okay. a few minutes at a time. And that, I mean, yep. that works. It depends on how stressed out you are. Maybe you want to do it for a few more minutes, but that helps to get you kind of re- reverse that process of feeling tight, you know, that tightness in your chest, your shoulders kind of rise, you know, like right now is your tongue on the roof of your mouth. You know, like these are all little signals that you, you could be in a little bit of a fight or flight. And so that's where the self-assessment comes in. So interesting. So, and you would be so sort of ideally doing it in the morning and then would it be sort of, even if you're not needing that sort of, extreme one during the day, the sort of um, four in, eight out one, would you be ideally trying to sort of just u- utilize the breathing at points during the day just to recenter yourself? Do you do you regularly do that or yeah, would you recommend that? Yeah, so the first step in that process, is a, that's the best question, right? Because I am a, like I'm a co-founder of a brand about breathing and I catch mm-hmm. myself holding my breath or breathing unevenly almost all the time, right? It just happens all day. So, and what happens is, is most often it happens when I'm uh, looking at my phone, right? It's called tech mm. apnea. Like a text message come in. I know that you guys have been there where the text comes in or the notification comes in or the email comes in and you see it. And then what the brain does is interesting. It anticipates something. And the, with that anticipation, the breath is affected because you're preparing for something. Mm. Right? Mm. Is, what if this is bad? What if it's a problem? You know, what if this mm-hmm. can cause some pain? So it's all that what if that gets you in trouble. You, you don't, you can't control it because it's just your brain doing it offline. But um, when you're writing an email, like I, I, I catch myself holding my breath or breathing shallow, and that's what causes a fight or flight. So mm. that's where that self-assessment is key because, or if you're just like on a computer all day and you're kind of leaning over or leaning into your, uh, into your computer, because your posture is bad, your shoulders lean forward, you're actually making it harder on your diaphragm to expand. So you're taking mm. shorter breaths and you're breathing more shallow. It's like all these little things add up to oh, and you're massively, kaboom, right? <laughs> so it's like massively oh, adds up. From. It's like, it comes from somewhere. And that's where that assessment of what's happening in your body. So like, if you're looking around, if you can kind of get into a habit of looking at yourself and understanding how you feel and why you feel the way you do, that you're able to correct it with the breath. I mean, and, and that's, yeah. That's, I do it all the time, but I'm doing it a lot less because of the awareness. Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group a women's community group, a general group. We're going to be loading up other groups and you can find all of the links at moveyourmind.me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout running Move Your Mind. And we have live events, we've got courses, we've got huge amounts of value, the ability to share information, share ideas, work in groups together to, to grow and share your learnings, to learn about different topics. You get email reminders. There's a whole lot of features in there. We're constantly updating it, and we're so excited to share it with you. You can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me. Yeah, and I mean, no matter how advanced you are or, you know, you're teaching this stuff, it doesn't mean you're not susceptible, like you're saying, to, you know, same with me with the mental health advocacy and the things I'm talking about. I'm constantly catching myself and bad habits or old habits are coming back, and you have to, like, I think anyone, but I think that's part of, the education of it and, you know, learning. Um, I With the breathing, um, what's your view on, I mean, there's so, seems to be so many different 
breathing things out there now. And, you know, Wim Hof is one that comes to mind, obviously. Uh, but there's so many others. And, again, I'm I'm really loving what you're talking about because this is sounding like something I'm going to start doing because it just doesn't sound overwhelming to me. You know, I I, I sort of naturally do a little bit of it, but it, it, it makes so much sense and it's something that, but when, you know, when I guess like these other ones that I've tried where it's you got to, you know, do all these crazy things for periods of time and it becomes almost just like not sustainable, if that makes sense. Like what's your view on all of that? <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up. I mean, first, Wim Hof is incredible. If you don't know about him, give him a Google too. Uh, this guy has broken like all the world records for, um, you know, swimming in, in glacier water, and hiking Mount Everest in his boxer shorts. He's like, that's he's crazy. Human, right? He does it all through breath. That's how powerful breath can be. Now, that is fascinating, but applying that to my life, I tried it. Yeah. Extremely difficult and it's overwhelming because what that is based on is, is it's like ice therapy, right? You're taking cold plunges, which are amazing. And I, I still do them occasionally. Um, I don't do them every day and I, I want to, but because it builds up resilience. To me, yeah. uh, I wanted to find a more practical solution that I could apply to my life anytime I need it. Like if I'm stressed, yes. I don't have to find an ice bath to get into. I want to be able to access a solution that's right under my nose, right? And that's breathing. So that's where this was so attractive. It's like, hey, let's do the math here, right? Like we weren't taught how to breathe when we were kids, whereas monks are taught that's their first lesson. Um, Leading cause of heart of, of, of death in the U.S. is, is and probably globally in, in first world nations is is heart disease, right? So that's the inflammation. Um, anxiety and addiction to our phones is, you know, an epidemic. What's one thing we can do every day? And then it comes back to that number of men. We take 20,000 thoughts. So what if that's like 20,000 opportunities, right? You don't have to take mm. every one. But what if you just get a little bit better at breathing and you mm. slow down your breath? Then you can do it. And that's why we, uh, the company that I co-founded, we made a necklace. And the necklace is, it, you wear it to use it. And it's a simple tool that slows your exhale to calm your mind. And mm. if you do that, you know, more than twice a day, you're going to build this habit. And through that habit of breathing slower two or three times a day, through neuroplasticity after 30 days of that, you're going to pick up the habit of doing that. And when you pick up yeah. the habit of breathing better and breathing slower, you're going to like my, my favorite quote now is it's a financial quote, which is not like me, but uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. And so mm -hmm. like in a financial climate where there's a good market, everyone does better, poor, mm -hmm. rich, you know, moderate. But when you breathe better, everything else gets better. You feel yeah. better. You look better. You're, you're talking better. Everything else is part of that of that, you know, economy of, of well-being. So that's where. The message is, is simple. It's breathe slow, feel better, and the necklace helps you do that. I love that. Yeah, no, it's so important. And um, overwhelm is um, such a such a big big issue uh, that we you know everyone deals with. So I love the fact that it's simple and applicable because I think you know. And again, like you're saying, Wim Hof and these people are amazing, and there's so much to learn. But I think for the most of us we don't stick to things unless it is actually very um, simple and able to be just integrated into our day-to-day -day life and what's happening. So, yeah, I think that sounds great. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I, and I, I'm not just to – I always say this, but, like, I am not a doctor, scientist, uh, wellness guru. Yeah. I, I'm none of those things. I'm just someone that had a problem and solved it, was able to solve mm. it through – just one simple step of breathing better. And that led to other changes, uh, yeah. you know, more journaling and, and, and more meditation and all of that. But sometimes it just takes that one simple step, that one stone in the water that's going to create a ripple that affects everything else that allows you to do more. So, um, so it's like, I, I always challenge people to ask themselves, like, what are you doing every day? I, you, you can mm -hmm. meditate once a week and you can go to the gym three, three days a week and change your habits of, of eating and all that. But, if you could just do something for yourself every day, let it be breathing better because that's going to allow you to do everything else better, whether it's be a better mom, a husband, uh, a brother, an employee, a manager. It's all going to it's going to lift all those boats up. Yeah. And and just for everyone listening, is that so the breathing, you breathe through your stomach in your tummy like to. Yeah. So just to demonstrate it real quick, it's a it's a deep inhale always through your nose because uh, that mm -hmm. that starts to filter out all these uh, chemicals. It releases more nitric oxide into your blood more oxygen 
and then you want to breathe into your belly, not into your upper chest, your shoulders, right? A lot of us do that. You see some of the shoulders rising and falling. Mm. You're in fight or flight right there. So you want to deep, breathe deep into your belly, to your diaphragm, to your chest, and then slowly let the air out. And that's where the necklace actually does it for you because I'll, I don't know if you guys can see me, but it's, uh, it's slowly out to the necklace that looks like this. My name is Nick Brax and I'm a storyteller who has dedicated my entire adult life to creating positive conversations around mental health. In recent years, discussions around mental health have become less taboo and entered the mainstream vernacular. I've delivered over 1,000 mental health seminars around the globe, including several TED Talks, and I believe we all have a story to tell. In my book, Move Your Mind, I cover my story and stories from people that inspire me, as well as insights from world-leading mental health experts. This book will help you to learn how to recognize mental health issues before they become a problem. Use your personal challenges as motivators. Take ownership of your well-being and create new daily habits that increase happiness and reduce stress. So that process right there allows you to, all it is is restricting the airflow, right? But it was developed by a psychotherapist and tested on his patients so that he found that like ideal exhale and that's where it lives. That's where, that's where it's Uh, That's So it'll literally, it'll force you to do it for the right amount of time. If you have enough air intake. Anyone, if anyone's ever been stressed out or anxious, it's hard to just kind of do things right in the moment. Uh, anyone Mm -hmm. that's ever been through labor, they're telling you to breathe a certain way. It's like, (laughs) it's not easy. I watched my wife go through it twice. It's when stress hits. It's like Mike Tyson said, it's like everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. You know, it's like, you get punched yeah. in the face. Now your mind is scrambled because the cortisol, right? So it's like, you can't remember, you're not doing it right. Here's this physical anger here. That's, that's waiting for you. And that's reminding you and forcing you to do yeah. it and to make it a habit. I was going to say that the fact that you're wearing it, is just a reminder daily to, to do it. You know, it's like, it's so cool. Yeah. I mean, I'll just, I love that. You know, I'll play with it. If it's under my shirt, yeah. over my shirt or something like that. And, and then I'm using it and someone's asking me about it. Like, Hey, what is that? It looks really cool. Is it a whistle? It's like, no, it's actually a breathing device and yeah. uh, it's, or a meditation device. And it helps me stay connected with, uh, with my body and it calms me down. And it's, it's a mindfulness tool. And, like, and wow, it? <laughs> no, it's so, so cool. I, I'm, I'm getting, I want one myself. That would be amazing. Um, where, where can people go to get it? Where can they find out about this? Yeah. Thank you. So if you go to our website, uh, it's, www.comusodesign.com. It's K O M U S O. And that's K O M as in mom, U S as in Sam O design.com. We ship worldwide. Um, there's different models, different colors, uh, different finishes. We have a bracelet version, uh, but it's completely organic. It's not tied to your phone. There's no notifications. Mm. This is an off the grid approach to organically feeling better. Which is so important. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, super cool, super cool. Love, love everything you. you're doing. So um, we finish every episode with five closing questions. So these can be, you know, sort of whatever comes to mind, whatever answer comes up. But the first one is, what's your best childhood memory that, that comes to mind? Best childhood memory, for whatever reason, just popped up, was being in the ocean uh, with my dad. It's probably six, seven years old, and he was, he was holding me with one arm as the waves came in and I felt safe and protected. I don't know why that first came to mind, but that was, that was probably the best. Yeah. I love that. I've got similar memories like that. And it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting what, what comes up first, you know, when you think about that. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think currently is the biggest burden on mental health um, in society? You know, I, I firmly believe that technology is a problem. I, I, it's a problem in my life. It's a problem in anyone yeah. that I see that's, that, that messages our, our company about their own stress is that we are becoming more and more disconnected with people and with ourselves internally. And that's causing more and more of a codependency on an app or on technology to solve it for us. Mm-hmm. And like kids are just, they're, they're always looking down now at, at their screens and it's training them to almost have this other appendage, um, which is leading us in the wrong direction. So uh, I, I want people to put down their phones, close their laptops and and spend more time with themselves or with their family, full, full stop. Yeah, it is terrifying. Like every time I'm in New York and every time I walk down the street, get on a subway, I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm not much better myself, but, you know, you're looking around and you're like every, on a subway, every person, it's, it's incredibly rare. Now, if you see one person not having sort of their head down, just, you know, we can't just let things be anymore. We can't be still. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's head down and it head down in the worst possible way. So, uh, so that's yeah. why I, I, I'm always trying to just like airplane mode, you know. Yeah, as much as possible. Um, what's your personal definition of happiness? It's a 10 year anniversary of Underwrap, and we've relaunched with the classic white pair. We've also got new styles coming out super soon. We're donating a dollar from every pair to mental health, currently to one in five. You can find all of this at www.underbrax.com. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think happiness to me is when you find yourself smiling and you don't know why. Uh, it's just yeah. kind of a, a feeling of, like, I don't know why I'm happy right now. It's just things are good and nothing is dragging down that moment of, because I, I don't know if anyone's been there, but it's like something good is happening. But then your mind drifts to, but what about finish, you know, fill in the blank. Yeah. You don't, you're not there. You're just in that moment of this feels good and I'm smiling because of it. So when you smile, there's a reason why that's happening. And then there's endorphins and all these happy chemicals going on. So, so yeah, I never thought about that, but that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. Uh, so I've got two more. What would, what are you most afraid of? In my personal life or for society? Uh, personal life. Um, I guess I'm afraid that something's going to happen to my family. Uh, mm -hmm. that's always my worst nightmare is my family not, uh, being around or somehow I've made a decision that has threatened that relationship. So that's why it's like that everyday commitment mm. to, uh, making good decisions and good choices is so present in my life because it could drift and that drift is scary and that where you are today versus two years, three years, you make these, mm. these micro decisions that kind of like keep, you know, push you further and further away from the people that matter most. I think that's a, that's a big problem. So another question, these are great questions. And another question that I never thought about, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think that's a really important answer as well, because what you're saying there, you know, it's like in the same way that if we just make these tiny daily changes and make it a habit and stick to it, over you know a week, a month, a year, five years, ten years, the changes are, are dramatic in a positive way. And the same way that if we make these negative behavior patterns, if we don't change that, it's going to compound in a negative way. So we have a choice about which way. But it's important to be aware of that because you can often think, oh no, I'll just you know, I'll change this behavior next week or when think when things get better or whatever. You know, we find some. There's always a reason, and you never change. Like it's the mind conveniently will find a reason not to do anything. Um, do it so now. It's just, that's the only, now's the only time we have. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so final one, what are you most proud of in for yourself? Most proud of it. You know, I hate to, uh, to keep coming back to this, but uh, most proud of my family. I think that uh, the way that this ecosystem works around me is I'm so grateful for it. I don't know if I've affected it or if I'm you know a reason for it, but it feels right. And I feel like that's that, if that's mm. right, everything else around that is, is while it may be difficult, you know, it, everything gets better because of, of that. So that's where going back to my previous message about being right with yourself first, if you're right with yourself first, the next step outside of that is the family. Like you think of these circles, right? So the next yeah. circle is the family. And if your family's right, then man, it's easier to do the other things. And it doesn't mean that those things are, not everything's hard, but when I go to sleep at night and my family's close to me and, and, and we're good, I'm good. Yeah. No, I think again, really good answer and very real answers. So I, um, yeah, love everything you're doing. Thank you for sharing, you know, you a bit about your, your story and, um, I think it's really important what you're doing. So anyone listening, you know, make sure, um, you go and check out the website. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes as well. And yeah, just want to say to you, thank you for making the time. No, Nick, now you've given me a lot to think about <laughs> with these five questions. So <laughs> I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, anytime I get a chance to share my story, my message, uh, it means a lot to me. And for all of you out there, uh, are going to pick up something else in the next five minutes. Just please be aware of your breath, be aware of how you're breathing so you can feel better by breathing better. But thank you. Nick. Right. <laughs> 
Thank you, Matt. Thanks to Todd Steinberg for joining me today for Move Your Mind. And just another reminder, if you'd like to check out Todd's products, you can go to camusodesign.com and you can use the code NICK20 to get 20% off all of the products. All of the links are in the bio. Thanks again for listening. And if you'd like to join the Move Your Mind community, you can go to moveyourmind.me. Or if you'd like to purchase the Move Your Mind book, you can go to nickbrax.com book.